Welcome to the Aero Circus video exploring the world of active noise reduction upgrade kits. Before we begin, you should be aware that there are a number of different options available with these kits and the process we will cover today may not be exactly the same as your experience. Today, the Aero Circus team will attempt to install an active noise reduction kit into an old pair of David Clark headsets. First up, we open the kit and make sure everything that is supposed to be there is there. Next, we gather the tools needed to do the job based on the list at the front of the installation guide. These include a multimeter, some pliers and side cutters, a small soldering iron and some electronic solder. The first task is to dismantle the old headsets. The instructions suggest removing the foam in the ear cups with tweezers which were not on the list of required tools. Because we pulled these ones apart to clean them straight after they were submerged in the floods last year, there is no foam left inside the ear cups of this particular set. Next, the speakers are easily removed with a screwdriver. We identify basic wiring inside the main cup. The main cup is the one with the cable that plugs into the aircraft. At this point we decided that trying to do all this with the two ear cups still joined by the overhead clamp was not going to be much fun. So we undid the nut that holds the sliding clamp together and separated the two halves to make our lives a little easier. We use the continuity tester on the multimeter to confirm the speaker wire colour inside the cup. Now we temporarily insert a speaker module into both ear cups just to make sure that they will physically fit. As you can see here they are labelled left and right and it is critical that they are fitted the correct way around. The reason for this is because the small microphones seen here between the two speakers must be placed in the correct position in relation to the wearer's ear canals. Then we identify the remaining speaker wires in the cup. The wire colours are generally standardised but it pays to be certain. Now we also identify the wires coming out of the new AMP cable which in most cases will be colour matched to the headset. Next up is the installation of the power cable. However, we purchased the integrated AMP cable, so this step is not required. Fitting the standard cable involves drilling a hole in the ear cup, installing a rubber grommet, passing the power cable through this, then using cable ties to tie the power cable to the audio and microphone cables. For a much neater and more professional result, we would definitely recommend paying the extra $35 or so for the integrated AMP cable alternative. To kick off the installation, we locate and open the packet containing the new crossover cable. Then, identify where each wire in this cable will eventually be attached to the new speaker units. The next stage involves replacing the crossover cable between the two ear cups. This is fairly straightforward if you pull out the old cable and feed the new one back through the same way as you go. This should ensure that the cable is refitted in the same locations and orientation as the old one just removed. When it comes to the ear cups, do one end at a time so you don't forget where everything goes. Finally, cut off the old crossover cable where it enters the main cup and pull the remainder back into the cup, leaving the old wiring attached at this stage. Then, 
Feed the new cable into the cup, ready for the next step. As in most cases, our headsets only require three of the wires in the crossover cable, so we trim off the white wire at both ends to avoid any confusion. We then strip the insulation off the three remaining wires, twist the ends, and tin the wires with some solder. Then it's time to solder the wires into the speaker unit and trim off any excess underneath the circuit board. Now it's time to fit the foam insulation. This needs to be fitted behind the wiring and can be cut as required to fit specific headsets. A zip tie is used to stop the cable pulling out. Next, we fit the speaker unit with the correct orientation. You must decide whether the mic will be on the left or right side of your head from now on. Finally, a special pad is fitted to the outside to protect the speaker from dust. The last major step is to connect the crossover cable and the new AMP cable to the volume control and the speaker in the main cup. We cut off the old audio and microphone cable and feed the new cable through the grommet. A little lubrication on the cable makes this a lot easier. Again, a zip tie will stop the cable pulling out of the cup. Pull the cable back, then try to work out which wires belong to what. While this is probably the most difficult part of the whole process, the instructions provide pretty good guidance. We just follow the colour wiring diagrams and take our time, making sure each wire is correctly identified. As before, we strip, twist and tin each wire in turn before soldering them together. When joining wires in this cup, we also use some heat shrink insulation or spaghetti to make sure there will be no short circuits. The spaghetti is simply slid over the soldered joint and shrunk in place using any suitable heat source. Once all the connections are made, the second speaker unit is soldered in as before. With all the wiring complete, the second cup is fitted with the foam insulation. Again, the speaker unit is fitted, being sure it is the correct way around and the wiring is not under any stress. Finally, the dust protection pad is inserted and the gel ear seals are refitted to the ear cups. The two halves of the headset are rejoined once again and the battery is inserted into the battery case. This is then plugged into the power cable and all that remains is to see if it works. Don't look so surprised, Gav.